Oh God. I've seen poverty in my life. Strong poverty. Poverty. That I diverse wisdom in buying Gary. I will go to the market with small money and price Gary. Then I will tell them, let me test the Gary. Then when I pack the Gary, I'm throwing my mouth. I say, maybe the Gary, where they look? It, 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 it not sour very well. Not lie. And they fool my tank in advance. And I'll put pure water around my pocket. I'm telling you a life story. I've not told you this one. I just want to add to my CV for you to hear. I go to another place again. I'll just change the Gary. I put it. I say, my dad, you know good, you know good, you know good, you know good, you know good. No good. I move like four places. Then what am I trying to buy? One cup of Gary. And when I get home, in some water, I boss it and put it in the water and give it what I call overmeasured water. Then I throw around the compound so that osmosis and diffusion should take place from a lower concentration to an higher concentration. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No, you see, if you don't know a man's story, some of you don't understand what I've seen. I've seen something in life. And I move and I, I move around. I walk around the compound praying that that Gary should fool the place. And to, to, I'm telling you a life story. There was one I bought. The Gary did not swell up the way I wanted. I attacked the woman the next day. Madam, which Gary you say, why are you duping me? Why? Woman said, don't be angry. Hush. You don't know what it means to go through suffering and get to this level. That's why I told somebody, I can fight anyone, no matter who you are, trying to stop this move of God. No, you can't. You can't try it. You can't. Whoever you are, I will fight you today. Because I did not enter here by mistake. I, I did not enter. It pleases God after seeing my suffering to pick me up. That's why some of you look at me. You look at me as if I'm small. What my eyes have seen, my mouth can't say. Don't look at me. I'm not a small boy. I oh. might look small. That is why you see what is coming out of this small container is bigger than this container. Because what God has passed me through, some 90 year old men have not seen it. You must understand that in the battle of destiny and in the journey of destiny, you must learn to put yourself around where God has put you. The gate of beggars. What, what is making you to beg? Where are you now that you are begging? Who has tied you down and say you should live all your life a beggar? How have they tied you down? People you are supposed to give, you are not begging from them. Which power from your father house, from your mother house, where are they? That gates today, I tear them down. Number two gates, I call it the gates of bronze. Then number three, the gates of dead. Job 38 verse 17. Job 38 verse 17 he said have the gates of death been opened unto thee hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death this is a gate where people get to they cannot live there to life that is the gate that englobes and overshadow people that makes them die every gate of death that have been released upon your life i tear them down I tear them down. Number four, I call it the gate of hell. The Bible says when the church is marching forth, that the gate of hell shall not prevail. The gate of hell is the gate that make you pass through fire, that make you pass through things where you are you are alive and you feel that you feel like to die. It's called the gate of hell. I prophesy every gate of hell, every gate of hell, let them catch fire. 
Oh, the way you are shouting that amen is looking for my trouble. I say it's looking for my trouble. Shout that amen like thunder. Every gate of hell, let them catch fire. Number five is called the gates of righteousness. Psalm 118 verse 19. Psalm 118 verse 19. Psalm 118 verse 19. I prophesy somebody is coming out somebody is coming out somebody is coming out he said open to me the gates of righteousness this is the gate that opened to you that brings righteousness to your life then the last gate is called the gates of thanksgiving David said I will enter his court with thanksgiving I will enter his gate with praise what does that mean this is a gate where you begin to share testimonies someone shot fire somebody is about to share testimony oh the way you are shouting that amen is looking for my is looking for my trouble the louder the amen the quicker a miracle i say shout that amen like thunder shout the amen like thunder shout the amen like thunder every evil gate catch fire psalm 22 verse 16 let me give you two scriptures and then we pray psalm 22 verse 16 look at these evil dogs they are about to catch fire he said for dogs have compassed me the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me they have pierced my hand and my feet what encompass me what are the things that surround me? Dogs! I hear what David said. He said, they are assembly of the wicked. And when you see wickedness, you see witchcraft. Who are those who have surrounded you? Where are the dogs? Today, may they catch fire. Ah, the way you are shouting amen is like your trouble has not reached you. Are you not tired of the trouble? Shout that amen and break out. Every dog from your father's house, dog from your mother's side, Holy Ghost, they pursue you in dream. They follow you everywhere. By the reason of this anointing, I shatter them. I scatter them. Philippians 3 2. You need to be aware of these dogs. Put it there. Philippians 3 2. Philippians 3 2. Are you ready? Read it together. One, two, go. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concession. Beware of dogs. Beware of dogs. The this is not physical dogs he's talking about. He's talking about spiritual dogs. Beware of what? Dogs. And the next thing that follows it is what? Evil, Evil what? Put it in. He said what? The concision. The concision. I checked the word. You see, incision means to put inside. Concision means to tear apart. That's what the dogs do. To tear you. To scatter you. To finish you. That's what these dogs do. They do. You see, these dogs don't plant seed in your body. They scatter your life. They enter you and tear you. That's what they did to Lazarus. I hear in my right ear, that winch is about to confess and die. When I came to Abuja, four times in my life, I've received calls from people physically, physically, physically. Do you know us? And I said, I don't know you people. So you are losing our people. One was an occultic group. You are setting our people free. One of our own came to you. And I said, I don't know who came to me. I am sent to free lives. 
We give you seven days. And I said, you have just mentioned your day of death. I'm here, still alive. Another one, they called me. I, I'm not saying, I did not say they called me in the dream. It's not the, it's not dream. That's to show you that they have tried spiritually. It's not working. Then they came physically. Another one, they called me. He said, Awani, she spoke Yoruba. He said, we are the people. I said, which people? He said, we are the people. We will finish you. We give you three days. And I said, you have just mentioned your date of death. When I said that, they caught the call. I, look here. I did not rush to cut the call. I want to hear. I follow the phone again. You know, you know, answer again. You don't need, you, you see, you need to know what to carry. Which, which wings? Which wings? Equa, qua, qua, equata. May they die by fire. May they die by fire. As they see you today, they run away. That arrow go back to sender. That arrow go back to sender. That arrow go back to sender. Wherever they have shoot you arrow, it go back to sender. Holy Ghost! When we came here, they brought sacrifice here and did all manner of concussion. I went there, pieces the team. I scatter it and I said the church of God is marching on the gates of hell shall not prevail I was here one Sunday ministry and God said to me somebody's in your church by the side there by that side there trying to operate I was in the office and I broke that feather. I broke the wing down. So many things happen here that we can't tell you you'll be afraid. You, you can't stop a man of the spirit. Are dogs domestic animals? Yes or no? They are domestic animals. So that has to tell you that the witchcraft coming to fight you are not far from you. They are not white animals. They are inside. Are you ready to pray? See, that's why ask people that kill dogs. They don't kill dogs the way they kill normal animals. Yes or no? Do we have people that eat that thing from that place? I did not mention Nemo. I said from that place. Those people, those tribes that eat that thing from that place, they know themselves. They know how they, they know how they kill that thing. I, did I mention name now? Why are you people looking at me? I said, people that eat that thing from that place. They know how they kill that thing. If they want to kill the dog, you don't use knife. I want to finish this witch today. You cannot use the normal conventional method. If you are where, if you, if you are where they want to kill dog, if you see how these people that kill dog do it, it's so dangerous. They have some mighty rod. Very mighty one. They will first allow the dog to look somewhere or deceive the dog with food or whatever. And chain the dog very well. And do you know where they aim? Not the leg. Not the belly. Where? The head. That's in coconut. Today, Holy Ghost fire. Mata Koshe Kala. Holy Ghost Every dog from your maternal side, Holy Ghost. Every dog from your paternal side, Holy Ghost. Are you ready? I see some dogs running. Nowhere to escape. And just block them. They will not escape today. Mass barrier of witchcraft. Wherever they are, Holy Ghost. Hey, hey, to to ti kwa kwa ikwalas. Embra do shekele gede gede gede. Wherever they took your name to, every witchcraft dog, I scatter them. I scatter them. I scatter them. I scatter them. 
I scatter them. I scatter them. I scatter them. I scatter them. I scatter them. For seven and a half years, I lived with one man in Ojuri Nakobo, my landlord. I told you about the story. I couldn't improve. The church never improved. I underestimate what God revealed to me because I did not lay emphasis on the importance. When you enter my landlord house, there is a big snail with some concussion it tie at the entrance. Several years ago, when I came to Abuja, the first year of this ministry, I was in a dream when God spoke to me, rise up and pray. He said, now you have left his covering. I said, which covering? He said, as long as you were in his house, you were under his covering. And the covenant that tied him was woven around you. Break that covenant. That's why I understand that. Where you lay your head. You want me to show you in the scripture? You want me to show you another one? Where you lay your head can control your destiny. You know they're here now. You know here. You know here. Then they look me. Then this is how they talk. You want me to show you this one? Ma? Let me show you this one before we pray. Anything controlling your destiny. Today, I scatter them. Today, I scatter them. Ezekiel 13, 20. Say preaching for another day, but let me pinch it for you. I want you to pray. Ezekiel 13, 20. And hello. 13, 20. 13, 20. 13 verse 20, not 2020. Let me show them this. Are you ready? Stand up. It's time for us to pray. Are you there? Ezekiel 1320. Wherefore, see the Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows. Wherewith ye they hunt the souls to make them fly. I will tear them from your hands. I will let the souls go, even the souls that ye on to make them fly. Uh, pillow. God said, I am against your pillow. Because your pillow, where you lay your head, has been manipulated. Through your pillow, they have made you to fly. He said, I will tear them apart. Your pillow talks about where you rest your head. He's talking about the bed and the house. So your pillow. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob lay his head on a stone and his neck never feel pain. He saw visions of heaven. Some of you, you are on a soft pillow and you are seeing yourself in witchcraft meeting. But somebody's head was on a stone. He saw heaven. Your pillow is symbolic. Don't let me go far out. I'm showing you things. I know come here by mistake. I know something too. You get what here? I know. I know something. That's where I understand that you don't know what it takes to anoint your pillow. You are not sleeping on any pillow. Some of you have entered a hotel and just carry your head and put on a pillow where witch don't sleep. I know some what preacher don't understand. That is why their church is where two or three are gathered in my name. They rent, they got a land and never broke the covenant. God told me after so many years that the reason why you struggled through, you were under a compound where a snail covenant had been activated. That is why you were slowed. Are you ready to pray? Any house. Hey, some of you know how to rent house anyhow. You don't enter. Any house, you don't enter. I don't rent house. You cannot pray. My life started 
having meaning when I left that house. I left, I went to Aligogo room and palo. That was the first time. And when I go to, hey, look at how devil is fighting me. When I go to another place, I met a man, landlord, they call him Baba Dudu. Black Baba. Baba Dudu. Again, I entered the compound. I saw another big child, front and back. He saw was worse than the other one. Front and back. At least the, well, the first Baba for seven years was front. But this one, front and back. Oh, the devil. <laughs> The devil knew I had covenant. But I never, I'm trying to tell you, I don't know, I don't know, well, well, look. Uh, you don't hear me? You know, they hear me, so. Look, I speak our language. Am I talking to somebody here? Hey! Which covenant is controlling my life? Where have I carried this my head to enter? You are asking yourself, I don't know where I can see myself for which COVID. You don't know who used that pillow. Who is even touching your pillow anyhow? Some of you, you, you don't you don't know what it means. You take people to your master bedroom to sleep on your on your, you don't understand. That is your convenient place. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh God. Can I speak to some women here? Let me tell you something prophetically. It's very strong. Hear it. Don't allow your house help to dress your matrimonial home bed. She can clean everywhere. But you see where you and your husband lay your head. Please, ma, sir. No matter how lazy you are, dress it yourself. Your destiny can be tied down by a bed and a pillow. Put it again. Ezekiel. Let's read it again before we pray. Wherefore thus say the Lord. God. Behold I am against your pillow. Wherewith. Yea. Wherewith. Yea. They hunt the souls. To make them fly. They, this scripture is saying. They have used so many souls. To fly by this pillow. This pillow is a spiritual aircraft. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. The most powerful part of your life here is your head upward. The last place you lay this head is on your pillow. <laughs> your pillow is windows to the other world. Message for another day. Can we pray? Can we pray? Are you ready? Are you ready? My eye don't see so. I don't see you. I don't see. I don't see. I've done deliverance and the people that brought the people were fighting me. <laughs> I have seen sick people brought here. And I see the people that brought the sick people against and the one that do, that do the thing. <laughs> I have handled a case of a mad person here. In the middle of the night, seven women appeared to me. I said, what are you doing? Leave our meat. Igila, leave our meat. Is it everyone now you're going to lose? Igila, leave our meat. I woke up from my bed. I prayed a little. I moved forward, take three steps. I heard my name again, loud and clear. Igila, fiero, wasile. Leave our meat. You don't, you are no, you don't. You think witches don't exist. All these men of God who are just talking anyhow. I don't, I'm not making them look important, but I'm making you understand. It is, uh, the Bible says we should not be ignorant of the devices. Why are you ignorant? Why, why are you trying to say you are the only one here? Don't be ignorant, know their strategy. Your head had been manipulated. That's why some of you, oh, common and death have claimed some people's life. Pillows. Pillows. Some witch house head have carried pillow, twist it like this, speak and chant into it and leave it for madame to lay her head. That is all. That's all they need. 
today, evil covenant. Holy Ghost! Several years ago, I handled a case in New Year. A man went to assume the skull of a, a dead body in order to do charm. Grind to powder the head skull. Grind it to powder. And use it to do some concussion. While we were praying for that family, God opened my eyes and I said, Papa, what have you done? He looked at me and said, Papa, I've not done anything. I said, there's something you have done. Then he called me aside and said, yes. I did something several years ago. It was for protection. I said, do you know the implication of what you have done? So the covenant was established against him. The skull that he grinded the head was a male skull. So they fought every male child that will ever come to the world. I told the wife prophetically, I said, your husband has injured the spirit war. Woman, don't try to conceive. Just leave it that way. Until he's willing to be delivered. But because of the stubbornness, she received his seed. In childbearing, she gave birth to a male child, died, and the child died. What am I trying to draw out of this story? You will not suffer because of the evil practice of your father or your great-grandfather or your maternal side in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? Just one prayer point I'm coming because I want to rush us in this service. I must touch everywhere.